Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Building the Shop in My Backyard. The plans were submitted and the permit has been approved, so we're ready to build. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you everything about that process and how that all went down and give you some prices, so follow along, let's go. So I wanna give a little bit of a update to the progress on uh, building. The permit process is kind of an interesting process and I'll, I'll explain why. Really? Stop. So I'm gonna try and make it short but informative. So first of all, I had to choose an architect. Um, I basically uh, took a recommendation. We went and met with that guy. He had some good ideas, everything was cool. He said, by October 15th, I'll get you a price and we'll start moving on it and whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, cool. October 15th, nothing. No email, nothing. Um, I hit him up, he's like, oh, I'll get back to you, I'll get back to you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Right away, to me, that's a red flag, right? If that person can't get back to you right away, then that basically means that you're gonna struggle along the whole process. So I decided, you know what? If he can't give me a price and can't stick with his own deadline, that means he probably won't finish my project. And it's just gonna be nothing but problems. So, started looking for someone else. I made a Facebook post, I got a, a couple people tagged locally, so I reached out to a few of them, and one guy I was impressed with. He's like, you know what, I'm gonna come to your house tomorrow. And I was like, cool. I go to his office, we sit down, kind of draw a sketch. He has some ideas, like what if we did this, what if we did that? Um, actually changed my whole idea, because originally we were gonna add an addition onto my house um, and make it a shop that was connected to the house and then we decided to do it separate. He basically guided me through the process and said, you know what, you're reading the rules wrong. You can actually build way bigger than you originally thought. Um, I didn't understand the language, the verbiage that was in the code. And so um, we were able to actually go a lot bigger than I thought. So on April 17th, that was the date that I contacted my architect and said, hey man, I really want to get this done within a few weeks. And he said, yeah, that should work out. Uh, maybe a month. So him and I decided to do some trade work. He has a 370Z and I, uh, we decided to do some headers and a clutch and some transmission stuff and other stuff like that that would equal about the value of what he was gonna do for me versus what I was gonna do for him. Um, for reference, it was about $5,000 to do with the architectural and with an engineer stamp. Um, and that's based, calculated on square footage. And so for the size that we're doing, that's about what it ended up, uh, five to $6,000. I was quoted 7,000 from someone else, um, somewhere in that range. It wasn't, uh, it was more than I was expecting, but I guess that's pretty normal. And he was on the low side and also offered to do trade. So really out of pocket, I was only half, half of what I was gonna be. And then plus the labor, you know, that I did. So, okay. All that stuff aside, April 17th was the day that I contacted him. He came to my house, measured some stuff out. We had some ideas, went back and forth, finally decided on what we were gonna do. To be fair, it wasn't April 17th where I'm like, start. It's like, okay, let's start talking back and forth. What are we gonna do? Where's the design? What do the city code say? How big can we go? All that stuff. So there's that back and forth. Where we actually ran into a problem was with the timeline. So I told him, look, it was this was about April. I believe it was April, April to May. And I was like, look, we need to, like, I need to get this going so I can submit it to the city. And he's like, yeah, it should be, you know, about four weeks. Like, okay, I'm not thrilled about four weeks, but like, we can do it. Like, let's go, let's get it going, right? Because every time I make change decisions or go with a different guy or shop around or whatever it is, it's, it's wasting time, right? And if we're talking about, even when it comes down to money, if it's, if it's, if it's a difference of saving a few hundred bucks, but it takes me a few weeks, like, can I, I, you can't buy time with money. You can't buy time with money. I have to keep telling myself that because I'm always trying to find the best deal and save money, but you can't replace that time. With any, any all the money in the world, you can't replace that time. So I was like, you know what? Let's just move forward. Let's go, let's go, let's make it happen. And I was on a tight timeline. He's like, look, I've, uh, I'm the only guy working right now. He had to lay off some people because uh, construction kind of went down in the past few years. He used to have a lot of guys and he was up and down and now he's down, right? Um, but he's like, your project is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I'm gonna get going on it. So I order all his parts for his car. Um, and he starts out, he does a few sketches. We finally, there was back and forth. It was like, as far as, okay, um, you know, this is what I want. 
and then he would draw it up and I was like let's change this and this and then he would draw it up then I talked to my wife well let's change this and this okay and then we finally came to an agreement that that in itself took a few weeks um, and then I was like alright let's green light it okay green light it now it's gonna take four weeks okay cool now we're six weeks right um, and then there were a couple hurdles I don't remember all the details but there were a couple hurdles along the way in the process and um, that stuff obviously takes time and there was a few times where you know I know my project got back burnered for various reasons and I know what it's like to be busy and be behind and all that stuff and so when he submitted it to the engineer so the architect does his job then he said submits it to the engineer the engineer has to go over it he made a few changes we went back and forth a little bit that took an extra week or two above what we thought it was so um, the architectural took way longer than I thought way longer than he had told me but I'm starting to realize that that's just how everything goes when you're doing a project like this. Everything takes longer than you think it's going to. And that same thing happens when we build a customer car, a, a, I call it a long-term project, because nothing goes smoothly, right? There's always little hiccups. Uh, this was one of those where I feel like we just got back a little bit and it happens, it happens, right? Uh, overall, I'm happy with the way that the uh, architectural turned out. He did a great job dealing with all my stupid questions, ex explaining to me how things work, uh, making sure that, you know, like, hey, you have this idea, but that doesn't work on paper, right? In your head, it might work, but when you put it on paper, that doesn't work. So he was very helpful that way. He didn't railroad any of my ideas and helped me make it happen. So um, I'm happy with that part of the process. It just took longer than I thought. Um, fast forward, we get all that stuff done, and I get the final engineered stamp plans in my hand on August 10th so April 17th to August 10th and I was planning on build I was planning on starting construction in July um, in my mind in April I'm like you know what if we're building by July that's kind of late but we can work that out uh, you know obviously I want to be building in April May June July whatever but I was like in July right that's like okay let's start in July those days came and went really quick which is really frustrating but Everything I've read and everything I'm hearing from other people is like, whatever you think is gonna happen, just double it. It's gonna take that much, it's gonna cost that much more. Everything, just double it because things don't go like you want them to. So, uh, August 10th, I get the plans, okay? And right now, today, I think is September 1st. So, just to give you a reference of, of the timeline I'm talking about. Um, I submit the plans to the city August, August 11th, whatever day I got them, I submitted them right away. August 31st, I finally hear back from the city, which was their own deadline, and they say, hey, the you know the back door has to have some sort of landing. And then they're like, well, you can't park vehicles behind your shop. And so I call the architect, he knocks it out like within an hour. He's got it back to me, got everything changed, updated. I sent it back to the city on the 31st, which was a Thursday before the end of day. Boom, let's go. So the next day, I get a call from the city. Um, and it's two guys on a conference call, and they're like, hey, we just wanna to talk to you about what you're planning to do here. And I was like, great, I'd love to talk to you guys. What's up? And they're like, okay, so what's your plan here? Are you gonna run a business from your home? And I said, nope, I've got a business in Clearfield with all the space I need for that. I literally just wanna separate my business from my work and be able to do my, um, my, race car stuff at home, my personal stuff at home and have somewhere to store my stuff. And like, okay, well, what's the deal with the door going out the back? You're not allowed to park in the back. And I'm like, okay, well, like the width of my shop is almost the same width as my property other than the setbacks on both sides, which leaves a little bit of space, but there's really almost no access to go around the building to, uh, to, you know, to go out the back to do anything, whether I want to do landscaping or have a barbecue back there or anything like that, I'd be either walking around like the landscape side of my buildings or going out a small man door. And I'm like, I just, I want access to the back of the building either way. Well, we're, uh, we're going to write an email that says you can't do this, 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 and this, and then we need you to agree to it. So we have it on record. So of course they say, oh yes, 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 majesty, whatever, yeah, whatever you want. You don't want me to park back there, I won't park back there. Sign the document, send it in. They end up attaching that document to my permit. Um, it just blows my mind. That's like, that's, that's next level of overextending against uh, property rights.
right? To tell me, oh, and it's, it's almost like they looked at my property, no boat storage, no vehicle storage, no uh, ATV storage, no jet skis, like everything that I have on my property, they wrote specifically out in that document. Blows my mind. I'm like, that seems kind of ridiculous. Like, back to the thing, I don't know if I've talked about it in this video, but this idea of, you know, freedom and owning property and all this stuff, like, I pay my property taxes, and I have for 12 years at this place, just to hire these guys to call me and tell me what I can and can't do on my own property is really, really frustrating. Um, there's no HOA. It's literally just the city deciding what you can do on your own property. And I get it, like, uh, you know, you can't be drilling for oil on your property. You can't, like, you know, build a build a, a 20 story skyscraper on a half acre. Like, I get it. There has to be restrictions within a neighborhood. But uh, literally, the, the email they sent me said, no vehicles can go in or out of that back door on the property. Like, what kind of restriction is that? That is ridiculous. Like, what if I wanna pull a car back there to, to wash it off in the gravel and then pull it back in? You know, nope, can't do it. It's not legal. The city said I can't do it. What if uh, it said no, no boats, no trailers, no nothing? Like, what if I wanted to, you know, pull a piece of equipment back there to offload it to, you know, to, to do some work back there? Nope, can't do it city said you can't do it that stuff to me just seems absolutely ridiculous um, really frustrating so uh, I jumped through the hoops and whatever and so now that's where we're at right now I'm waiting to hear back from the city again it's a holiday weekend so I probably won't hear back till Tuesday but in the meantime we're gonna start uh, doing some more site prep at the property and that's what we're up to today I just want to fill you guys in and all the uh, the bureaucratic process, which is really frustrating. I wish I lived in uh, backwoods Florida, where I literally could just uh, do whatever you want without permission and not have problems, as long as you're not bothering anybody else. That's how I feel things should be, but that's not. I live in a city and trying to get along with uh, with everybody, very difficult, very, very difficult. I'm a, <laughs> I got the soul of a country boy living in a city and it's not easy. After that, we go back and forth a little bit. Um, I ask them a few questions, they ask me a few questions. They finally say, okay, good to go. They stamp the plans, send them back to me. All right, let me show you what we got for plans. You see we came back, they're stamped, ready to go. So this is the uh, front profile, this is the overhead, right? So this is all shop space over there. This is the office storage space. We'll have a bathroom and some other stuff over here. This can be built out in the future. We'll have a little wraparound porch there. And then we have the one door and the two doors. This is, of course, overhead looking down. Let's scroll through here a little bit. What do we got? That's the front and side and rear profile. That's the front of the building. That's the side. That's the back with the door. And that is the other side and some windows and whatnot. What do we got here? Electrical. The footing, so we have uh, post frame construction, so we have these piers and columns that will be going in um, around the building, and then this will be traditional framing with a underground footing below the frost depth, and then we'll have plumbing in this side with uh, a few options for sinks, bathrooms, and stuff like that, so it can be built out to how we want it in the future. And then this is the upper floor, which is basically a mezzanine. We'll have a mezzanine above this part, that we can uh, have extra storage up there and we'll have a ladder access. Uh, that's the side profile. This shows the footings and foundation. The truss height is gonna be uh, three feet. So then the building walls will be 13 feet. So the inside uh, to the bottom of my trusses will be 13 feet inside the shop. And then between trusses, since the trusses are spaced out so far, we have 15, six um to the very top in there that'll give space to uh to go really high with the forklift for storage and whatnot and then there's detail on all these different piers and columns and posts and the engineer draws out uh all sorts of different construction techniques which is kind of cool has all those notes in here but that's it that's uh this is what five thousand dollars gets you it gets you a set of plans to go off of with electrical plumbing foundation uh, the, oh, there's the site plan. So this is how the property is laid out. So that's my existing driveway for the house. That's the house and my garage. This will be the driveway coming into it. That'll be asphalt and concrete. This is the footprint of the building. And then that's the 20 feet behind the building. And then our setbacks. And so I still got to figure out what I'm going to do between the house and the shop. So we can have some landscaped area there. 
but as you can see there's a whole bunch of space wasted back here we were required to have that set back and then they tie my hands and say i can't do anything back there so that's really frustrating but that's it that was september end of september right so it's like cool all the summer is gone the entire summer that i was planning on building this is gone and now it starts getting cold and starts raining and it's like okay the process is done ready we got the we got the approval let's move forward and then that's when we started running into uh cold weather so it's just like this whirlwind of stuff that happens where it's like i'm ready to go the city says yeah go ahead the architect's done with his stuff and then we hit like a like a lull like a slow point right and that's kind of where we're at right now um we've got a little bit more done in the next couple videos i basically i'm a little bit behind in videos so what you're seeing right now i'm a little bit further along than what i'm showing but that will come in the next two or three videos but basically we're still in that process of okay let's move let's move let's move right and it's gonna get cold and snowy really soon and we have still got a lot to do we have no walls up yet and the foundation isn't complete so we've got a lot to do but that'll be in the next video up till this point um, in this video I've got basically the foundation the uh, the permit cost was just over a thousand dollars like a thousand fifty so between um, between plans and permit we're about six thousand dollars on to the next step thanks for watching guys we'll catch you in the next video goodbye